Imagine one day you learn that ninjas are real, and that you are the heir to one of the greatest ninja clans. We meet a boy named Itaki, who sees light flashing from the top of a building. He looks out from the window, and a boy complains to the teacher that he was sleeping. So the teacher calls Itaki up to solve a question, which he correctly solves, and the teacher appreciates him. After the class, his friends ask him to join them for karaoke. Itaki wants to join, but he refuses saying he has many other activities to do and he literally has no time. A girl named Kusetsu follows him around. Itaki asks her to not follow her since it's quite awkward. Kusetsu says she's following him because his mother told her to. As Itaki walks back to his house, he uses a shortcut jumping over the walls and sliding on stairs showing his gymnastic flexibility and athleticism. When he lands on the road, a van, out of control, approaches towards him. He narrowly escapes by doing an impressive backflip. At a local shop, a Karen shouts at Tokusada, Itaki's uncle. The shop owner hits him in the head and drags him to his office. The shop owner scolds him for his poor service. Since he isn't very good at customer service, Itaki's mother Yumika agrees to handle the customers. Later, Itaki helps his mother with the cooking. There's a picture of his father, and we learn that he was in some kind of accident. The following day at school, he finds a love letter in his locker and is naturally taken aback. A few hours later, he meets the person who sent him the letter. The girl is named Satomi and studies in second year. Although Itaki doesn't know her, she tells him that she has been keeping an eye on him for quite some time and also saw him avoid getting hit by the van the previous day. She asks Itaki out. Itaki is eager to start his dating life and plans a day to go out with her. Excited, he reaches home and tells his mother that he'll not be going to his gymnastic class this Sunday because he has made other plans. Shockingly, Itaki's mother quickly catches him and asks if he has a girlfriend. Later at the dining table, Itaki tells his mother about the girl. When his mother finds out that Itaki is going to date a girl he doesn't even know, she doesn't allow him to go out with her. But despite his mother's warning, Itaki decides to meet Satomi just as they had planned. Uncle Tokusada drops him at the Iga station, where Satomi is already waiting for him. Itaki is naturally nervous as this is his first date, so when he asks Satomi about the day's plans, she asks him to come to her place. Although he is shocked, Itaki can't muster the courage to say no to her. At Satomi's house, she serves Itaki a drink, the couple sits together not really talking to each other. However, when Itaki tries to open up a conversation, Satomi just stands up and walks a few steps away from him. To Itaki's surprise, she drops all her clothes and turns towards him. Itaki can't believe his eyes and tells her to stop. When she tries to make out, Itaki shoves her away and panics. He asks her if it's a prank and someone is going to come out. He looks down at the bed, and within a second he has a cut on his face and gets surrounded by mysterious people dressed in black clothes, who appear to be led by Satomi herself. Luckily, Kasetsu jumps into the room through the balcony before it's too late, and manages to help Itaki escape while she deals with the danger at hand. Meanwhile, outside the house, Reha and Kaizo, the store workers, are present to escort him to a safe location. Unfortunately, the car they are driving is attacked and they tell Itaki to run for his life while they fight the enemies. A few hours later, Itaki finds himself on an empty street. Suddenly the light starts to go out. An officer comes from behind, and Itaki tells the officer everything that happened with him. An enemy grabs the officer's face from behind and kills him with a knife. Itaki sees the blood coming out of the officer's neck and steps back. Another enemy comes from behind and punches Itaki. The mysterious enemies tie him up and throw him to the ground. Luckily, Itaki's uncle shows up at the right time, and the enemies recognize him as Tokusada of Carnage. Tokusada calls out the officer who is also an enemy, playing dead. In an instant, Tokusada dashes past the men to check on Itaki, shocking them with his speed. He puts on a strange armor, and proceeds to fight off everyone. Itaki loses consciousness in the process, and the next time he opens his eyes, he finds himself in the car, near a house, which Tokusada describes as his parents' home. Kusetsu leads him inside, and Itaki finds himself sitting in the middle of a gathering of about a dozen people. It is soon announced that the clan head has arrived, and he is shocked to learn that the head is none other than his mother, Yumika. She reveals that they are the shinobi of the village of Iga. Itaki is shocked to hear that and refuses to accept that they are ninjas. 
His mother explains, Ninjas, who came into being a few hundred years ago, have continued to thrive by hiding in the shadows and integrating with ordinary citizens. As ninjas, it is the duty of a person to adhere to a strict code that promotes social cohesion between different factions and villages. Unfortunately, after decades of relative peace and prosperity, things have started to take a turn for the worse. The Koga clan is a group of ninjas living in the village of the same name that have used modern ninjutsu and immense wealth to further their nefarious agendas. As one of the strongest villages, they wish to stamp their authority by ending their rivalry with the Iga clan by ensuring its downfall. In order to achieve this objective, the Koga tried to kill Itaki as he is the 19th legitimate heir of the Iga shinobis. After his mother tells him that he belongs to the Iga clan and has taken enough basic training, now he is supposed to take on his responsibilities as a ninja. Itaki refuses to accept this as normal. Tokusada understands his dilemmas and takes him outside. He tells him that he can decide either to be a ninja or die, Itaki gets mad as his life was normal until yesterday and suddenly, he is to be a ninja. Tokusada tells him that he'll help Itaki escape if he wants to, as Yumika told him to do so, and no one will blame Itaki no matter what he chooses. Tokusada tells Itaki that his father used to be the leader of the Iga clan but after his unexpected death, Itaki's mother took responsibility, as he was too young at the time. Yumika has faced many things since then and shouldered the duties and responsibilities all alone. Although Itaki was initially reluctant to listen to anything, he decides to not run away after learning about his mother's struggles. Satomi on the other hand is planning to kill Itaki at any cost. The following day Reya tells him that he will be enrolling in the Ninjutsu Academy for ninja training, and for that, he will have to take the transfer exam which is in two days, and also take leave from school for a while. Reya briefs him about the NSC, the National Ninjutsu Security Measures Committee, which was formed after a war between the villages, to avoid further conflict. Despite his little knowledge of the ninja world, Itaki accepts the challenge. Luckily, the students at the Ninja Academy are very safe, so Itaki can live a much better life there. At the shop, Koga Holdings sales director informs Yumika and Kaizo about increasing wholesale prices. Yumika accepts and agrees to continue the business dealings. At night, Itaki has dinner with his mother and talks about the ninja school. His mother comforts him and says he'll be fine. On the day of the exam, the location of the test is finally told to his uncle and he takes Itaki to the center along with Kusetsu. After Itaki reaches the examination site, Tokusada reassures him that killing is forbidden for the ninjas, so he will most likely be safe. With Kusetsu, he enters the shopping complex where he asks one of the employees where the ninja meal is, after being insisted on by his friend. It turns out to be a secret code, and upon hearing it, she opens the gate to a hallway at the end of which students like them are waiting for the exam to start. There they learn that the exam is going to be a mock ninja practical exam of hide and seek. The students will be split into hiders and seekers. The hiders will be allowed to go to the service area first and hide somewhere. Just one minute after that, the seeker will follow and will have a time frame of 10 minutes to look for the hider. In order to pass the exam, the seeker must touch the hiders in the allotted time, while the hiders are expected to avoid them to win. The exam is monitored constantly through security cameras. When it's Itaki's turn, he is shocked to realize that the person he is supposed to find is none other than Satomi, who had tried to kill him just a few days ago. To make matters worse, the service area is filled with assassins who are waiting for any opportunity to kill him. Luckily Tokusada is there, keeping a close eye on everyone near Itaki. Kusetsu soon comes to Itaki's side, and informs him that Koga ninjas are here, and they are after him. She tells Itaki to complete the exam and leave the enemies to them. She saves Itaki when an assassin takes direct aim at him. When she confronts the assassin, it turns out that she is none other than Satomi. Kusetsu informs Itaki that the enemy is using Heat Haze Type 3, which uses quantum stealth and 3D meta materials, a type of optical camouflage which is helping the enemy to hide their body completely making them invisible. Itaki looks cluelessly at her. She tells him to just focus on passing the exam and she leaves. Itaki looks around and thinks for a while and decides to just focus on staying alive. Kusetsu is fighting with Satomi and soon is surrounded by assassins and Satomi manages to go after Itaki. Luckily, Itaki is smart with his approach and uses the fire alarm to evacuate the area so that no one gets hurt. 
he uses a fire extinguisher to make it harder to see him, and with the help of smoke sirens, he manages to turn on the water sprinklers which helps in tracking Satomi's movements despite her camouflage. Satomi moves towards Itaki to kill him, and is kicked away by Kasetsu. By this time, the assassination attempts are already exposed and Satomi is arrested on the spot. Itaki fails the exam, since he didn't touch Satomi within the allotted time, and returns to his uncle's car thinking he is eliminated. Tokusada tells him that he has to hide on an uninhabited island until the next exam. However, he is later shocked to find out that he passed the exam and was selected for the Ninjutsu Academy. It turns out that the school headmaster was impressed by Itaki's courage and justified his selection by arguing that he has the heart of a ninja, which is the most important thing. But that's where the video ends. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this series. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.